Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, there's nobody like our Father God, is there? Nobody. Hallelujah. I could, I, I could dance right now. Woo! <laughs> Glory to God! Hallelujah! Woo! He's a good God! Ha ha ha! Glory! <laughs> Hallelujah! He's a good God! All the time! He is good! Hallelujah! You know, a lot of people... You can be seated. A lot of people think that, that God has a good side and he has a bad side. But my Bible says that my God is good. Doesn't say anything about him being bad. It says he is good. And it says the enemy is bad. Hallelujah. That's why he was kicked out of heaven. What did he do? He entertained wrong thinking. Entertained wrong thinking. <laughs> How important is it to keep our thinking in line with the Word of God? How important is it to keep our thinking in line with the Word of God? Hallelujah. And there, there's many ways to do that. But I, I'm... <laughs> well, before I get into this, I guess I better ask... <laughs> Say my commercial. <laughs> Do my commercial. How's that? Because I, I got several things I want to say, but we'll get them said. Yes. Amen. I have a few things back there on the table that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that some are new, some are not, but still good stuff because it comes from the Word. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Sorry that word from the Lord got me. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I tell you what, I received it. It's mine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, my book, Knowing Overflowing with the Holy Spirit, Knowing the Person of and of the Holy Spirit and Learning to Walk in His Power. Not in its power, in His power. Amen. Hallelujah. And then I have this little CD, Who is the Holy Spirit? I wanted to, to package this where that it would catch up someone's attention besides a believer. Because people have questions about the spiritual realm. And they hear different phrases. So the Lord instructed me. He said, you entitle this to draw. So it's who is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And we talk about who he is, who is the person of the Holy Spirit. And then really along with that, that little CD, uh, Brother Buddy's book, How to Stay Full of the Holy Spirit. We actually, this used to be called Maintaining the Spirit-Filled Life. And we um, kind of updated a few things. Actually, we left everything in here, he said. You know, we didn't add to it or take away from it. But we retitled it, How to Stay Full of the Holy Spirit. So these two make a great little package to, to introduce people to who the Holy Spirit is. And once they're introduced, how to maintain that fullness. Amen? And then one of, one of the books of my dad's, I carry some of my dad's books in, on the table. And one of the ones that I think is so important for every believer, is plans, purposes, and pursuits. It's so important. You know, there, um, of course I've read all my dad's book and I go back and read others, but there's a few of them that I go back through the year and I just pick it up and I read certain excerpts that I've underlined or, or whatever, you know, because I need to feed on that right then. You know, and it's important to have things in your hand that you can go back and pick up and feed on real quick. That You need it right then. Amen? So this is a great, great book. Hallelujah. And then this CD, it's not a new CD, but we repackaged it. It's simply called Focus. In the day that we're living, there are all kinds of distractions. And it's very difficult for the church, it seems, to stay focused. Amen? So this is a... Um, a four 
CD set. <laughs> and the first one is the importance of focus. The second one talks about the distractions that hinder your focus. The third one is the consequences of being out of focus. And then the fourth one is the steps to maintaining focus. This is very important. You know, when I was in Nigeria about, oh, I don't know, it's probably been six years ago now, but I, um, the Lord told me while I was there to teach this series because I had that many sessions. It was a conference that they were having there. And we were in the church that actually, we were in the church in Nigeria that um, <clears throat> they, because the pastor called hold of the word of faith, he began to teach his people, and they built that church themselves, and it seats 13,000. And when I was there, they had that full. They had an overflow in the basement that seated 1,000, and then they had a tent out to the side that seated 1,000, and it was all full. Yeah. I thought, where did all these people come from? <laughs> you know, it was very interesting. But on that Sunday morning, I was teaching the last... Uh, session of, of, of uh, staying in focus and the governor of, of that state came to the meeting with his entourage and that was about 300 350 people and uh, so at the end of the service I called the pastor over and I said the Lord wants me to minister to him how do I go about that you know because you don't just go down and say, you know. <laughs> so he went down and spoke to him. And he came up, and I ministered to him by the Spirit of God. And, you know, you minister by the Spirit of God, or I do, and it doesn't come from here, so I don't know. It's for them, not me. So I don't need to retain it. Amen? <laughs> so uh, anyway, I ministered to him. And then he stayed on the, on, the, on the platform because it was kind of high because it was such a large place. And so after service, he said, may I speak with you? And I said, of course. And he said, I want to tell you I'm so excited about what you are teaching about focus. He said, that is one of the biggest issues with my people. He said, they lose focus so quickly and so easily. He said, I've already spoke with the pa pastor, and he said, I'm going to get those sets, and I'm going to require that everybody that works with me listen to this. And he said, the more people I can get this in their hands, the better off this state is going to be. So praise God, you know. So God has purpose in all things that he does. It wasn't just, just for the people that were there. But it was for, sorry, this is pulling. <laughs> but it was for him, especially because of the influence that he had. So we never know why God, completely why God has us do certain things unless he desires to show us. But praise God for that. Praise God for that. And that was like six years ago. How much more now? How much more now do we need to stay focused? on what God is saying to us, what his word says about us every day in living life. Amen? <clears throat> Another thing I have up there is a mailing list card. This little card, on one side it's a mailing list card if you want to be on the mailing list to find out what all we're doing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can fill that out. On the other side it's a partner. It says partner with us. <clears throat> so I am... The Lord laid this on my heart just this month, first of the month, wasn't it? And he said, I want you to believe for 100 partners from now till the end of the year. So I'm believing for 100 partners from now to the end of the year. So I believe I received them. I told the devil to take his hands off my partners. Amen. What does the devil do? He goes and tries to influence them negatively to what God is saying to them. So if you speak to him and say, you take your hands off of mine, what's mine, my partners, 
And then you speak to the ministering spirits and you say, ministering spirits, you go and cause them to come. What does a ministering spirit go? They influence for good for what God is asking of you. They influence you to move in that way. So, devil, you take your hands off of my partners and ministering spirits, you go and cause them to come. Amen? And then, just like my dad taught me, every time my mind wants to go a certain way, I say, "Uh uh-uh. I already said... It's working. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And Pastor Nancy told me to talk about this, so I'll talk about it for just a few minutes. We have, uh, we just launched Harrison Christian University online the 5th of September. And we're really excited about this because we not only have the School of Theology, but we also have a School of Business. And everything is accredited. In the School of Theology, you can go all the way up to your doctorate if you so desire. In the School of Business, because the secular world will not recognize a nonprofit Christian entity as knowing anything about business. So they want, so we can, you can only get up to a bachelor's degree, but you can get a bachelor's degree in business. And the reason that this is important to me is because. This has been a part of our vision for many years, and we just never, there are certain ways that we did certain things. But Buddy and I were always called to ministry and business. Ministry and business. So as a result, I think it's important that we as Christians understand business. Especially pastors. There's too many pastors that know nothing about business and they get themselves in in trouble. They want to, you know, do the business side like you do the spiritual side and it doesn't work that way. Because the business side is the natural side and the natural side has different laws from the spiritual side. There's spiritual laws and there's natural laws. Now God put them both in place. And when you learn the spiritual laws then those natural laws will fall in order if you do what you're supposed to do and have understanding of it. And that's the key. So we have not only the theology, theology side, but we also have the business side. And like I say, we're excited about it. A lot of good things are happening. We have a lot of good instructors, and God is blessing us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, the way, yes, we have a website. I always forget what it is. Isn't that terrible? I know how to go to it. <laughs> it's HCU dot online. Is that right? I'm sorry. I had material and they didn't put it in, so I'll I'll, I'll talk to somebody. <laughs> That's enough said. I'll talk to somebody. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I just love the Lord, don't you? And I love the Holy Ghost. Don't you? Praise the Lord. I want to talk to you tonight something that is nothing new. (laughs) Nothing new at all. You know, um, when God instructed me to begin to teach his word, he said, I want you to keep it simple. Because he said, my word is simple. He said, it's your human mind that makes it difficult. But he said, my word is simple. I say what I mean, and I mean what I say. But we're always trying to figure out, well, now, did he mean this or did he mean that? You know? He said, I said what I mean, and I mean what I say. So we, um, so I said, well, you know, I can do that. <laughs> and so we began to learn to just speak the simple truth of the Word of God. Amen? And like she was talking this morning, you know, your mind wants to go, well, they've heard this before, you know, big deal, you know. So what? <laughs> if God wants you to speak it, there's a reason. There's a reason. Again, because he is a purposeful God. Amen. So we're going to talk about training the human spirit. 
And the reason we're going to talk about training the human spirit because if you don't learn to train the human spirit, you, your human spirit, you will never learn the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To be confident with it without saying, is that you, Lord, or is that just me? You know? But when you train your human spirit, then you know, begin to know the voice of the spirit and you know that when he's speaking to your spirit that that is truth and you can be, trust in it. Yes. First of all, because the Holy Spirit is a spirit of truth. Yes. Second of all, that's how God communicates with us is through our spirit. Amen. Amen? Amen. He said that he created us like him. Yes. He is a spirit. Yes. So the real me on the, is on the inside of me. I am a spirit made just like God. Amen. That's hard for some people to hear, but it's truth. Yes. I am a spirit being made just like God. And my born again human spirit has no problem believing what God says. Yes. Amen. It's when I get caught up in my mind that I begin to have problems. So we have to learn to train our human spirit so that we definitely, beyond all doubt, know the voice of the Holy Spirit. And we need that in this day. How many of you know we need the Holy Ghost? It's just not an option. We need the Holy Ghost. Amen? So let's turn to 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. We'll begin there, and we'll go see how, how far we get. <laughs> In 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, the ninth verse says, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love them. But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. So what he's saying to us, as a man, somebody else cannot know you like you know yourself because you know on the inside of you who you are, how you act, what you do, the whole nine yards. Nobody else knows that. They don't know your secret thoughts. They don't know any of that. It's the same way with God. He has all these things he's prepared for us, but it's by his spirit that he reveals it to us. Yeah. That's the reason we need to know the Spirit. That's why it's important we have understanding that this Word has life in it. Yes. And that's the reason that we need to understand that we have to allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to us the understanding so that the life lives in us and abides in us and works in us and through us. It's not enough that it works in us. It needs to work through us. Amen? Amen? We're not here for ourselves. That's right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then you've heard this scripture, Proverbs 20, 27. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's by the spirit that we know God. It's by the Holy Spirit that we know God. It's by the Holy Spirit that we have understanding of this Word of God and how it's to work in our life and how we are to work it. Amen? Amen. Amen. So our spirits can be educated, developed, trained, and built up and strengthened just as our mind and our body can. Amen. We all know that, I believe. I hope so. But how many of you know this? It's a process. It's a process. Amen? It doesn't happen overnight. <laughs> Just as educating the mind and strengthening the body doesn't happen overnight. You know, you don't go to kindergarten one day and the next day you go to the 12th grade. It's a process. And when you begin to exercise, you don't pick up a two-pound weight one day and you go in the next weight day and you pick up a hundred-pound weight. I don't think so. It's a process. 
It's a process. You know, I'm so proud of myself. I have to tell on myself, I am not a big exercise person. <laughs> but I have to keep my stamina and my strength belt. I'm not out there trying to look like somebody. I'm just there to strengthen myself. <laughs> Amen? Because <laughs> I got a lot of traveling to do. You know, this time I'm out, I was in Texas. I came here, and then I go to uh, Arkansas. Then I get home, and I'm home a few days. Then I go to Brazil. I'm home a day and a half. And then I go to Tennessee, Kentucky, somewhere. Kentucky. You know, I don't even know where I go half the time. Gwen has to keep me in line. But I'm busy. So I have to keep my strength. I have to keep my stamina. You know, I'm not 20 years old anymore, even though my mind would like to think so. At least 50, you know. My mind thinks more like 50. And I'm, I'm well past that. <laughs> but... So in, in, in doing that, you know, the, the young man that was helping me, he started me out with one pound weights. And they felt heavy. <laughs> I mean, not to where I couldn't lift them up, you know. But I hadn't done anything like that in so long that it was ridiculous. <laughs> But and then the, and the next day, well, when the next day, it was the day after that, two days later, when I went back, he didn't put a five-pound weight in my hand. Yeah. In fact, he put the one-pound weight in my hand first, and then toward the end of the process, he put the two-pound weight in my hand to see what I could do and how I could do. You know? And he had me do simple things that, in the beginning... I had not done before. They were they were they were hard, but they were different. <laughs> but I I loved it, you know. I really loved it, and it helped me. But it was a process to strengthen my arms, to strengthen my legs, to strengthen my back, to build my stamina, you know. And so now I have certain exercise. Because I'm gone so much, I really can't keep up the ritual that I had. I was going three days a week. And uh, I couldn't keep that up because, you know, you leave on Friday, you may be come home on Monday. It may be the next week of Monday before you come home. So he gave me these things that I can do in my hotel room that still keeps my stamina going. And I, um, um, I have healed legs in Jesus' name. Amen. But he gave me some things, and I've got to get some more to help my legs for the strength and the stamina in my legs because they're healed. Because they're healed, they've got to have a process of strengthening. So, you know, you have to be diligent to do what you need to do. And so in the spiritual realm, we have to be diligent to do what we need to do. You know? Uh, it's great all that God has done for us. It's wonderful. But if you don't do anything about understanding it so you can receive it and walk in it, it's not going to work in your life at all. And it is a process to train in any area, mind, spirit, body. It's a process. And we have to be diligent with that process so that we continually are growing and training all the time. All the time. And, and there's, there's some principles that I want to bring out to you that I think helps you to help you follow, to train your spirit. Amen. Because these, these four principles, if you discipline yourself to do them, will bring you into a place where that you have total confidence of what comes out of your spirit is of God and you can hear it and you can obey it. It's just like Pastor Nancy said a while ago. She saw that angel. Well, okay, so you saw an angel. It's not enough to come and say, there was an angel in my car tonight when I was coming to church. Well, why was he there? That's what I want to know. Why and how come? Yes. 
So she knows the Spirit of God enough to know to ask. You know, if you ask God, he'll tell you. But don't ask if you don't want to know. That's where a lot of people get in trouble. They ask, they're told, they don't really want to know, and they drop it. And then they're in disobedience, and then they're in all kinds of hurt. And they operate in all this stuff, not real, realizing that they asked God, and he gave them the answer, but they dropped it. We can't afford to do that. We have to know him and follow him. I will give you these four principles and then we'll talk about them, okay? Amen. Number one, the very first one, is meditation of the word. That's first and foremost. Number two is practice the word. Number three, give the word first place in your life. Not in a few things, in your life. And number four Instantly obey the voice of your spirit. Amen. Instantly obey the voice of your spirit. Amen? Amen. Excuse me. So the first thing we're going to talk about is meditation. Excuse me. And Joshua 1.8 says what? This book of the law shall not depart. What? I can hear it. <laughs> I can hear you. I'll read it. This book of the law, put my cheaters on, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make yourself prosperous, and then you will have good success. It doesn't say, then I'll make you prosperous and I'll make you have success. It says, if you do what I tell you, then you make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Amen? So what we have to understand is we have to meditate the Word of God because it's going to bring us into good success and it's going to make us prosperous. Yeah, yeah. And when we talk about prospering, that's just not money. That's every area of our life yeah. needs to prosper. Right. Every area in our life needs to prosper. Yeah. And if every area is prospering, then we have plenty on hand to bless others. Yeah. Amen? It's not for us to, you know, pour it on ourselves. It's for us to be able to bless others. I dare say there's some of you here that have not received that uh, money that you desire because when you get it, rather than ask God, okay, how should I spend this? What would you like me to do first? You want to take hold of it and be greedy and run and get. I want, I want, I want. But God is saying, I want to bless you. But you have to have an attitude of going to me first and saying, what would you like for me to do with this as you bless me, Lord? And the Bible is very clear. If you do what God says that he wants you to do as far as giving, you will be continually, super abundantly blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It all comes down to meditating the Word and understanding what the Word is saying to us. Amen? Amen. We cannot deal wisely in the affairs of life if we are not meditating the Word of God. Can we not? No, we cannot. I'll say it again. We cannot develop spiritual wisdom without meditation of the word. And I would advise you, if you're having difficulty in this area, to set, shut yourself away from the things that are distractions. What you need to do is put down your phone, put down the remote, 
take your Bible, take your notebook and a pen and go with God. What I call going to the mountain. Because when you go to the mountain, it's you and God. And I tell you what, you have mountaintop experiences. <laughs> because he talks to you. Because you've shut everything out. You've shut yourself away so that you calm your mind down and you begin to meditate the word and your mind begins to grasp hold of thinking like the word and your body becomes my, uh, uh, peaceful and at rest. And then you can hear. You can hear what God is saying. Meditation is not just looking at the word and this is, yeah, this is this. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not meditation. When you meditate the word, you look at every word. Every word. And think about what that means. Ask the Spirit of God to show you what that means for you. And how you are to operate in that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to take the time to meditate the Word of God and to hear from Him. Meditation is the Word and prayer with God. Amen. This Word is communication as same as prayer is communication. You know, when, when, when you read the Word, you should talk back to it. You should talk back to it. When he says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, they say, okay, Lord, this is your word. This is what you've given me to live by. This is my instruction book. So I'm to let it not depart from my mouth. Okay, I, I'm not going to let it depart from my mouth. How do I do that? And I was doing this one day, and the Lord said, well, keep reading. So I kept reading. And he said, but you shall meditate in it day and night. If you meditate in it day and night, you will keep it in your mouth. If you meditate in it day and night, you will keep it in your mouth. Amen? Amen. The reason being is because you are seeing it, you are hearing it, you are speaking it. And once you begin to speak it, it feels so good. It sounds so good. You want to hear it again. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And then he says, the reason you do that is so you can observe to do according to all that is written therein. That's the reason. And you say, thank you, Lord. I understand that. I see that, you know. So talk back. Communication. Oh, yeah. This is communication. Amen. Same as prayer is communication yes, yeah. with the Father God. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And then you can get a little excited. <laughs> because then he says, if you do all this, then you're going to make your way prosperous. Yes. And you're going to have good success. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> That right there should make you excited. Yeah. I can remember my dad telling this story many, many, many years ago. And he was talking about that he was actually in this state, and uh, he had been at a conference, and this pastor came up and asked him if he had a few days to come to his church and minister. And he said, yes, he would do that. And so he went to this church to minister, and the Lord said, I want you to specifically teach on meditation of the word so that's basically all he taught on he was there i think it was three days that's basically all he talk, uh, talk, taught on was about meditation of the word and how that works in your life and what happens in your life when you do that and give understanding of that that meditation is going to bring you into the place of being prosperous and having good success Amen. Well, this pastor was telling him this a couple of years later, and he said, you know, I was so excited about that, that word you were teaching, it was so good, and he said, I have to tell off on myself. He said, up until that time, 
He said, every church in this country that seemed to be doing something, I'd get in my car and I'd travel there and I'd see what they were doing and I'd come home and I'd put that in practice and it didn't work. He said, then I'd see over here and I'd get in my car and I'd go over here and I'd see what they were doing and I'd come home put that in practice. It didn't work. And he said, I did that one time after you taught and he said, it didn't work. And he said, I was just sitting in my office, just contemplating, okay, I've been running all over this country and, and looking to man, and nothing worked. It might have been something that God told them to do, but he wasn't looking to God, he was looking to man. And the Lord said, what did Brother Hagin teach when he was here? So he began to reiterate some of the things, talking about meditation. He said, that's what you need to do. He said, I want you to take your Bible, your notebook, your pen, and come with me. So he set himself apart for 30 days in meditation of the Word, communication, you know, in the Word and in prayer, listening to what the Lord was saying. And the Lord kept telling him to be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. And the Holy Spirit would give him scriptures, and he'd meditate on those scriptures. He said, I want you to know that at the end of 30 days, my church began to prosper. Yeah. And I began to have good success. Yeah. Not anything I did in the natural, but I went to God. Yeah. And God began to work. And as God began to work, then he began to give me a plan to help with what he had started. And he said, we had new people come in. We had families of people that didn't even know our church existed that was looking for a place that taught the Word of God. And he said, so at the end of 30 days, every department in my church was prospering and we were having good success. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How important is it to meditate the Word, have that communication with the Word and prayer and with God so that you know His voice and He's working. <laughs> He's working. Amen? He said there are people that came in that he didn't even know that got born again, and he said they were so on fire for God, he could hardly keep them down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They wanted to do something. They wanted to serve. They were so excited. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This, what did he do? He made himself prosperous, and he made himself have good success yeah. by allowing God to work in and through him. Yes. And as God began to work, then God gave him the plan. Yeah. He could see God working, not man. And then God gave him the plan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have the cart before the horse, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. So much of the time. Hallelujah. Okay, number two. <laughs> I could go on and on, but we got, well, I'm going to try to get all this out, okay? Practice the word. What does that mean? That means be a doer of the word of God. Be a doer of the Word of God. What does James 1.22 say? It says, But be doers of the Word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Why do we have so many deceived people? Because they're hearers only. They are hear hearers only. I can remember, this was years ago, um, there was a song talked about fat little babies. They sat and listened to the Word and listened to the Word and listened to the Word, and there were these fat little babies, you know, weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. Yeah. Fat little babies walking around. They couldn't do anything because they were so fat, but they wouldn't release anything to give to anybody else either. What were they? They were not being doers of the Word. They were not being doers of the Word, not only in their life, but to others and for others. Hallelujah. 
So we have to learn to be doers and not hearers only so that we don't deceive ourselves. What does that mean? That means that we can't, you can't be a doer of the word and continually going around talking about your discouragements and your failures and, and your fears and all this garbage is doubt and unbelief and be a doer of the word. You cannot. All those things are things that are here in the natural to distract you from what you have learned in the Word. God is love, and it says perfect love casteth out fear. So if you have the love of God and you're operating in the love of God, there's no room for fear in your life. You know, I found out in any area where you're having difficulty, you know what you need to do? Check up on your love walk. Check up on your love walk. It says, faith worketh by love, right? <laughs> faith worketh by love. So if you're having a struggle with your faith, check up on your love walk. Amen. I'm serious. This is serious stuff. <laughs> Hallelujah. You need to feed on the epistles. You know, that's where it talks about who we are, who Jesus is, who we are in him, what we're supposed to be doing, how we're supposed to be doing it. Being disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, I don't know where I am in my notes, y'all. <laughs> so we have to study the epistles so we have understanding of this. This helps us to begin to be a doer of the word. Because when you begin to understand who you are in Christ and who he is, that within itself self helps you begin to do that which you have heard. You have to put it into practice. People don't like the word practice in the spiritual realm, but it's a good word. It's a good word. Because we are to be like Jesus, and he was the perfect one. And what's going to make us perfect? Practice. 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 <laughs> These people that are so well known for their abilities, they did nothing in their life, but practice, yes. yeah. practice, yes. practice what they're known for. That's right. That's right. Amen. Day after day, day after day, year after year. That's why they know it backwards and forwards. They know what to do. They don't really have to think about it sometimes. Yeah. It's automatic, and that's the way it should be in your life. The Word should be automatic Amen. in your life. Because you are a doer thereof and not just a hearer Amen. only. Let's look over in Philippians. <clears throat> I want to show you something here. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat is dry today. <laughs> Where am I going? Philippians. <laughs> oh, I'm going the wrong way. Sorry. <laughs> not anything wrong with me I do know this Bible I, I, were, I read it quite a bit <laughs> well I said I knew where Philippians was I will find it thank you Jesus my Bible keeps I keep messing up here sorry <laughs> alright here we go here we go I kept turning too many pages. All right, when you go to Philippians, the fourth chapter, this is one that we're very familiar with. And when you start with the sixth verse, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. Be anxious for nothing. That means don't get uptight, don't worry, don't, you know, what if and how come and woulda, shoulda, coulda. Right, right. 
Don't be anxious for anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication, that means anything that would want to cause you to be anxious, then you go to God in prayer and supplication. That's what that means. You go to God with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Yeah. With thanksgiving. And you let that request be known to him. And once you do that, you have trust in him. Then verse 7 is the result of practicing verse 6. Then you go to verse 7 and it says what? And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. So when you do what verse 6 says, then you're going to have verse 7. Because you chose not to be anxious, but you chose to go to God with your supplication. And you chose to be thankful. Amen? Amen. And as a result, the peace of God, which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And then how do you keep this and how you maintain this is verse 8. Verse 8. And what does verse 8 say? Finally, brethren. So we have to meditate and practice this. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are what? Honest. I, I, my scripture says noble, but it's the same thing. Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, think on these things. So what's he saying to us? He's saying to us, think and do on the God side of life instead of thinking and doing on the world side of life. That's what he's saying to us. And the key to this is there are things that are true. Oh, yeah, there's things that are true. But are they lovely and are they pure? Are they of good report? You know, those are, those are the keys there, you know. And if there's any virtue or anything praiseworthy in it, that's the key. Then you think on these things. Amen. Then you think on these things. Hallelujah. So we have to think on the God side of life and not the world side of life. Too much of the church has allowed the world to come into their thinking and their lives. They don't respect. They don't honor. They, uh, it's amazing to me. It's amazing to me. They have this, uh, the attitude of, you know, I deserve it. The only thing you deserve is a quick kick in the, swift kick, I should say. Swift kick and then you know what? For your attitude. <laughs> we have to learn these things in our life to be as God intended us to be. To be the whole person that God intended us to be. This, these verses right here will keep you in that whole person that God intended you to, do, to be if you practice it. All you have to do is practice it. You know, you don't need to get upset about anything. I heard Brother Keith Moore say uh, last month, I think it was, he said, you don't have a right to get upset. He said, we're always talking about, you know, we have a right for this, and my right's this, and my right's that. He said, if you're following the Word, and you're doing the, what the Word says, you have no right to get upset. He said, the reason that there's so much road rage and all these things going on is because people have allowed themselves that it's their right to be upset. You know, I just think 
people that don't know God and some that do, but apparently not very well, carry this rights thing too far. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I, believe me, I'm not a political person by any means. It aggravates me, so I stay away from it because I choose not to be aggravated, okay? Choose not to be upset, amen? And you can make that choice. And that's what Brother Keith was saying. He said, you can make the choice. You can make the choice. God did not make you a robot. You don't have to do what everybody else is doing, and you don't have to say what everybody else is saying. You do and you be who God said you are and what the Word of God says about you. That's what you have a right to do and to be. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I could go on and on on this, and I, I'm trying to get through this, so uh, forgive me. <laughs> Number three, always put the Word of God first place in your life. First place in your life. And we're familiar with this scripture, Proverbs 4. Twenty through twenty-two, it says, "My son, give attention to my words; incline your ears to my saying. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep in the, them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and health to all their flesh." Hallelujah! So the word of God needs to be first in your life, and you know. And some people, well, I can't do that. You can't go around having the Word of God in front of your face all the time. Well, honey, if you take the time to meditate the Word, the Word's on the inside of you, and it's just going to come forth, and you can just speak it. That way you hear yourself speak it. And then when you have the time, you can read it, and your eyes see it. He said this is all important. All important. That way God is always first in our life. God is always first in our life in anything we do. Have you ever heard this? Well, I've done all I know to do. I guess I'll ask God. Have you ever heard that? Isn't that pitiful? My Lord, bless you. As my dad used to say, <laughs> what do you, how do you say it? Your darling heart and stupid head. <laughs> Isn't that sad? I've done all I've known to do, so I guess I'll ask God. That's backwards. That's backwards. You ask God first. You say, okay, what does the Word say about this? We used to do that all the time, but, you know, we let things slip because we get so confident within ourselves. And we forget, like she was talking this morning, from whence we came. From whence we came. <laughs> so we have to know that putting the Word of God last resort in your life will lead you down a trail of tears. But putting God first place in your life will lead you down a trail of what? Life and health. Hallelujah. Isn't that what we just read? Isn't that what we just read? He says to keep them in the midst of your heart for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Glory to God. So we put God's word first so that we continue in life and health. Hallelujah. We train ourselves to go with the word first about every situation, any circumstance, anything. What does the word say? What does God say about this? My, my. That's important. It's so important. And then you go with what that word says. Then you begin, you back up and you begin to be a doer of what that word says. Amen? Amen. Praise God. <laughs> I will get through this. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then number four, instantly obey the voice of your spirit. You understand that your human spirit has a voice? Your soul has a voice? And your body has a voice? You know, we call it intuition. We call it uh, conscience. We call it inner voice. And my dad always says this, the world calls it a hunch. He said, I don't much like that. <laughs> no, because it's not a hunch. It's not a hunch. It's from the Spirit of God. And you can tell if it's coming from your spirit. Don't you know when something is coming from within you instead of out here into you? You should be able to. Amen. Because we live from our spirit being. We live from the inside out, not from the outside in. The real me is my spirit man. That's on the inside of me, so I live from the inside out. Outside is my mind and my soul and my body. And I don't live in my mind and my body. I live in my spirit. That's who I am. Hallelujah. And I renew my mind with the Word of God. There's so much in the Word about the renewing of the mind. Why? So that your soul speaks the same as your spirit speaks. And when those two are in agreement, that body has to do what you tell it. You have authority over this body. Amen. So... We must know and become aware that the God speaks to us through our spirits. And as a result, we learn that voice and we learn to listen and be obedient quickly to the voice of the living God that speaks to us through our human spirit. I think we all understand this. But we must understand that when we become born again... We are a brand new, born again spirit unto God, alive unto God. And I said at the beginning, and I'll say it again, my spirit man has no problem believing what God says. It's my mind. My spirit has no problem believing what God says because I have been born again through the Lord Jesus Christ. That means I have a brand new spirit, just like God gave in the beginning before sin came into this world. Through what? Through disobedience. That's why obedience is so important in your life. Because... Genesis is a great picture of what happens in your life if you're not obedient. Amen? So obedience is the key. He gives us grace, and by faith we take hold of that and walk in the obedience that he has asked us to. And it's easy to do that when we have trained our human spirit and we know the voice of the spirit and we know the word of God because in training the human spirit, you can't help but learn the word because you've got to meditate on it. If you're going to train your human spirit, you've got to meditate on this word. You know? Wow. And it's important. So important that we walk in the fullness of this because this day that we're living in, if you don't learn to follow that inward voice, that inward witness of the Holy Spirit, you will be deceived. You will be deceived because you're not following forth and listening to what God is saying. He will protect you. He will guide you. He will feed you. Whatever you need, he will do in these last days if you listen to him because you know him and you trust him. I remember my daddy saying a long time ago in a prophecy that he he, uh, spoke forth, he said, in the end time, my people, 
those that know me and follow me will have no problem being fed, being protected, and all that goes with it. Why? Because they know God, because they know the Lord Jesus, because they know the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is the voice of the Father God speaking to us. So we have to learn that the Holy Spirit dwells in us and he is greater than any other in this earth or in anywhere. (laughs) Hallelujah. His power is greater than any power above and beneath and in the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because it's the power of God. And God is Almighty God. He is the Omnipotent One. He is the one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. (laughs) That loves us so much. He gives us all this information so that we can be strong, so that we can be true, so that we can be pure, and so that we can be the vessel to lead someone else into this wonderful kingdom, the kingdom of God. That's our main priority, folks. Our main priority is bringing the lost into the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our main priority is not to come together as believers and have a believers meeting. Those are good, and they're needful, and they're important, but that's not our main priority. Our main priority is bringing the lost into the kingdom of God in whatever way that God leads you to do that. Whatever way God leads you to do that, that's what you do. You know, um, Faith Christian Fellowship is not a large, large, large organization, but you would be amazed at what we are able to do around the world because we obey God, because we're diligent to do that which he has asked us to do. When he called Buddy and I, he, the last thing he said, and reach the world. So we're reaching the world still. Hallelujah. Many are coming into the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of our team was just over in the bush in Africa, just just left yesterday, actually, to people that never heard the gospel. But they got to bring it to them. Glory to God. And lives were changed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what it's all about, folks. And we have a world right here in front of us that's lost and dying and going to hell. But God says, I want them to know me so that they walk in freedom and they come to me and live with me in a place called heaven. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That right there should set you excited about God and about what you're to do. If nothing else... Bring somebody into the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Surely anybody can do that. You know how you got born again, don't you? Well, then tell somebody else. That's simple. That's simple and that easy. Amen. You know, it's the enemy that puts the thoughts in your head. Well, I don't know what to say. What if? You know, even if they reject you, so what? All you have to do is say, okay, I understand, but just know that Jesus loves you. And leave them alone. You planted a seed. And God will see to it that that seed is watered. Amen? (laughs) The important thing is you plant a seed. Don't get discouraged if you talk to someone and they don't come to know Jesus right then. You planted a seed. And a seed, what is it's the nature of the seed to grow. I don't care what kind of seed it is. It, its nature is to grow. So you plant the seed and it will grow. Hallelujah. Your part is to do what he's asked you to do. That's your part. And the important thing is that we learn to exercise ourselves in the training of our human spirit 
so that we know that we know that we know the voice of the Holy Spirit and another we will not follow. Amen. Amen. I thank the Lord every morning because I love the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I thank the Lord every morning. I thank you, Father God, that I know the precious Holy Spirit who you've given to me and another one, another I will not follow. Glory to God. <laughs> and I thank you for the blood of Jesus that's on my protection, not only for me, but for my whole family. Yeah. Hallelujah. And we walk under the protection yeah. of the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Glory to God. And I thank you that we as a family dwell under the shadow of the my almighty God and no plague shall come nigh our dwellings. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When you know the truth of the word and it's a part of you, it's easy for it to come out of your mouth. It's easy for it to come out of your mouth. And that's what should be coming out of your mouth. You know, if nothing else, you know, we need to learn to be thankful about everything. If nothing else, just begin to thank God. Well, I don't know what to thank him for. Well, I want to thank you, Lord. I was there when I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I want to thank you, Lord, that I was there when I received the fullness of the Holy Ghost. I want to thank you, Lord, I was there when you delivered me from whatever. I want to thank you, Lord, that you are my healer, and I was there when you healed me when I couldn't get up. That's plenty right there to thank God for. Surely you can think of something to thank God for. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's almighty God. And he has blessed us so tremendously that we should never, ever forget to be thankful and grateful. There are so many things, if we would just think about it, that we could be thankful for. And there's so many things that we don't even know what he's done in protecting us and helping us. And I say to him all the time, Lord, I'm so grateful that you protect me and you help me and you take care of me of things that I don't even know. But I don't have to know because I know you're my Father God. And that's you desire that more than anything, that I'm protected, that I'm helped, <laughs> that I am who you said I could be. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. God is so good all the time. He is so, so good. My, 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 my. I get so excited. I, I can't hardly sit, sit still, stand still or anything else. You know, and one of the reasons, <laughs> I'm not a morning person, okay? So one of the reasons I start that in the morning, it energizes me and I can get out of bed. Hallelujah, because by the time I get through a few of those things, i got to get up and out, moving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We must always be thankful. Living a thankful life is a big key to your faith. A big key to your faith. Living a thankful life is a big key in you operating in faith in your life. Hallelujah. Always, always thankful. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's stand. Don't you love the Holy Ghost? Yes. <laughs> Just pray in the Holy Ghost. So Give a Le crosse tela, le crosse tele le le bon de be ka shi na mara ha. Oh re bari. You 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 ba shi tele me ha ha. You are anointing ha. You see ta le ba ha. Le ke she de bra ha shi te lo. Ah destroys the yoke. Ha ha ha. Le kre shi te le be de ya ha. Le ko shi de le ba ha. Le si te le ba ha. Le bra shi te le ba. Lo shu to lo ba. I si te le be ya. Le kin se le le ya. Now, I'm going to lay my hands on you. Ha, ha, ha. And, and you, 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 you lay them on your husband. For that suta, that suta le baha, she te le be, who she de be unto him. And it will affect every area of his being. Ha, ha. 
And each and every one of you, as you learn to move in the Spirit and you learn the voice of the Spirit as you're ministering to people and as you're helping people, there will be an anointing that will come upon you that will bless them, that will change them, that will cause them to move into that which they desire down in their heart, but they don't really know exactly what it is. But that anointing will cause them to reach out and grab hold and take hold and be changed. So expect, expect, expect the anointing in your life by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to God. Ah, oh, ha, 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 ha. I expect the change. I know it. I know it. I expect it. Yeah, yeah. Ha, ha. Le la ha, ha. Whoa. Thank you, Lord. 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 Ha, ha, ha. Reshi Now, you know, some people say, well, well why, did you, why did you just lay hands on the few? Because that's what God said. Second of all, that was a demonstration of the anointing that you can operate in. Maybe not that way. But that anointing will come upon you. There's an anointing in you, and there's an anointing that will come upon you when you're ministering to people and talking to people that will help you put Christ over every time. <laughs> every time. Every time. Hallelujah. You know, the Holy Spirit likes to demonstrate himself. And that's just what he did. That's just what he did. <laughs> Glory to God. I, 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 yeah. Le crochet de le boho. Yes, that's true. That's true. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Let's lift our hands and thank God. One more time. For his word. <laughs> for your anointing, Father God. For all that you are to us, precious Father. <laughs> for everything that you're doing in our lives and for us and in us and through us. You know, this place has a vision. And this place has an anointing that God put up on it. And there's nothing, Pastor Nancy, that can take that away. You know that. But he wants to reiterate that. There's nothing that can take that away. Because the Spirit of God is saying, the Father says, I left it here. And I left it here for a purpose. And you have that anointing, plus your anointing, 
plus more I'm giving you as you walk more in understanding and wisdom. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and that anointing will destroy everything every time that's in your way. So you call on it. You rely on it. You ask me for it. And you receive it and you walk in it all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ha, ha, ha. I give you all glory and I give you all praise, Lord, for you are almighty God. Hallelujah. I want you to come in the morning expecting God. Amen. 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 Expecting God. That's the key. Hallelujah. Pastor, glory to God. Thank Hallelujah. You, Hallelujah. Let's raise up our hands and worship the Lord. Father, we thank you tonight for what we've heard. These are precious things to us. So, Father, now we didn't just hear a sermon. Now we have life imparted to us so that now we know what to do when we leave this place. And so we purpose we'll be doers and not hearers only of what we've heard tonight. And we thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost that enables us. And we thank you for it. And everybody said, Amen. how many of you know you've got homework now? Yes. Don't walk out of here and just say, oh, wasn't that good? I'm so glad I got to be in the services. This is so you know what to do when you leave this place. Amen. Always approach every service the same way that you have in mind what you're doing now when you leave this place i i was thinking why with there's enough in us in here tonight why can we not have a hundred partners tonight for her ministry why can we not so i'm taking one from me and one for our ministry so that's two. There are 29 cards that they had. That's not enough for 100. But, um, so if you'll hold on to those for me. But I want, I want us to, uh, do you have a sheet of paper? So she will stand up here and put paper, paper and uh, you can write your name. You can write your info. They just need your name. Let me see what they need. They need name, phone number, address, all the things pertinent to that. And also, if you want to have a then an amount, and then if you want to have them apply it to a credit card, leave all that information. Because many times people, that's a convenience for them that it's done. So if you say, you know what, I'm going to be a partner. You say, well, God didn't tell me that. Listen, if something in your heart receives something, there's no reason you can't be a supply. And it's not going to hurt or take away from what other giving you have. The Bible says we have enough to give to every good work. You have to act on that. I have enough to give to every good work. This is a good work. I have enough. Don't measure whether you are, whether or not you have enough. Believe what the Word says, that we have enough to give give to every good work. Amen. Amen. So you can give to your church, give to the ministries that God's put on your heart, but uh, this is certainly a worthy, a worthy ministry to partner with. So I'm going to ask if you would like to become a partner, there are, come up here, Pastor Noel, and just hand those out for me. Come up and get those from him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we run out, then I'm going to ask you to, as I said, you're going to meet with Miss Chelsea or go back to the book table. I'd rather you come up here and do it because I don't want you to walk out in there and get distracted. You know, there's a lot to distract. So maybe you can write it down on a piece of paper, all that info that's pertinent to the info they would need. Hallelujah. Now, Sister Pat, is there a certain amount that, a, a, you know, a minimum? I know they can give any amount, but what do you like to consider that reaches partner level? Is it $25? Is it, do you have an, about 20, $25? But you, many of you can do more. 50. 25 to 50 that because sometimes people will say well I'm going to do it for two dollars that's wonderful if that's what you can do but it, it, do what do what's in your heart to do and you say you know I want to do more but I can only do this begin where you're at and you can always add 
Amen. So I'm going to ask this. If you say I'm signing up tonight and help me count. I need Josh, help me count. If you say for the first time I'm signing up to be a partner with uh, Sister Pat, raise your hand high because we want to get a count. So maybe someone else, if Josh is counting, Morgie, get up here so you can count. Hold your hand up high. Now there's two with me, Morgan. Hallelujah. Just stay there till they get it counted because uh, there's no reason we can't at least do a big chunk, if not all of it. Amen. So raise your hand up real high. And make sure that they can see that. Maybe uh, all of you that are on the line, write, you can put, go to your seat and write your name and just go to Sister uh, Chelsea will sure, be but easier. don't leave the auditorium. Right? Yeah, don't leave the auditorium. Just put all your information and everything right back. Yeah, we want to just make sure we get all that information so that it's a help to you. Did you get the, what would you count? You have close to almost, almost 60 with everybody together. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, listen, can I say this? When you give your word, keep your word. I remember years ago, I mean, I was like uh, 20, I think I was about 20, 20 or 21 years old. And I, I, was, a, I was just a, a new Christian. And I remember there was a certain minister there locally in Tulsa where I lived. And uh, they had a television ministry. And I signed up to be a partner. And I remember about, and I, I seriously, I, I sent it in and did that for a couple months and forgot. You know, when you're 20, 21, you don't have good systems in place sometimes. And so I forgot about it. And I remembered uh, a couple of years later, I, I, there were some things that I was talking to God about. And he reminded me that. And I said, Father, that's right. I signed up to be a partner and I didn't fulfill that because I committed for a year. And I did not fulfill that. And I said, I ask you to forgive me. He says, I'm going to forgive you, but I still want you to fulfill it. <laughs> you know, because people think if I if, just forgive me and then let, we'll forget it and go on. But, you know, that's God's not helping us practice not fulfilling our words. Amen. And so it's an honor to do that. Amen. Hallelujah. Say again. Yes, absolutely. If you can, the first month of partnership you can give tonight. So when you turn in that card, so I'm going to ask you to go back and turn the card in at her table. And we'll have some staff as well as, I don't know if Miss Glenn will be back there, but if not, uh, we'll have uh, some of our staff to go. And so if you're prepared with that, absolutely turn it in tonight. If not, you can send that in. But we would like for you to, at least for us to get the card. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you know this is good ground? You know, my dad was a cotton and wheat farmer. My dad uh, spent his life not gathering seed. He spent his life gathering land. He was always looking for the best ground. He could get his seed anywhere. He could go to any old feed and supply store and get his seed. But to find the ground to put it in was where the real value was. And how many of you know this is the kind of ground that will make a difference in your life? Hallelujah. Sister Pat, thank you. That's so, so wonderful tonight. How many of you know we got much tonight? We got much tonight. And you know it came from, it, you could hear, it came from a place of her own fellowship with God. And it feeds you and it, and it, uh, it, it encourages your fellowship with God. Hallelujah. Sister Pat will be back here in the morning ministering. You don't want to miss it. Amen. How many of you say, I'm going to come expecting to receive? I'm going to come expecting to receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there anything else that I've forgotten? Okay. Hallelujah. Turn around to somebody before you're dismissed and say, I'm going to keep practicing following the Holy Spirit. And you can be dismissed. God bless you.